Wesley looks at the Anglican 39 articles. He knows that they're not all of them uh, terribly significant, but he does agree that they are sufficient. They're sufficient for the church, for believers. They are sufficient to lead us into and to sustain us in a life in Christ together, together. Uh, and he accepts a rather wide reading of the 39 articles. He says, for instance, at one place, he wants to be a man of one book, and that book is clearly the Bible, because it's the key to heaven, as he calls it. And, and there's, no, there's no doubt that he was a man of that one book. What that meant, however, was not that there was just one book. It meant that that book <laughs> was necessary to all other books for their, for their truth and for their uh, helpfulness. They were dependent upon that one book somehow or other. And behind that one book stood the spirit. Wesley here goes back to this matter of experience. The Bible is not sufficient unless you let it be sufficient for what it's supposed to be sufficient for. It's not sufficient to hold you up if you fall out of a boat. It's not sufficient as a, as a doorstop. Its sufficiency lies in uh, guiding, leading, maintaining a relationship, a saving relationship to Jesus Christ. Uh, and as he says of that one book, <laughs> uh, it, it, will, it will lead us to heaven. Now he understands that the spirit is behind all of that. The spirit that dwells in us teaches us how to read scripture. The spirit gives us a desire to, to read scripture. The Methodist uh, needed articles of faith or declarations on certain doctrines. And when, when uh, the Revolutionary War was over, they had to be independent. Um, the Methodists here could not could not uh, stay connected to the Church of England, and they weren't really anxious to anyway, even in England. Uh, <laughs> so Wesley, uh, as one of his gifts uh, to the church in America, as he signed off as the father of Methodism here, uh, he remained the father in spirit, but he no longer had legal responsibility. Uh, as he signed off, he uh, gave them the gift of the, the 25 articles. He left out several that he felt weren't necessary to the sufficiency of the scripture to guide us into salvation, to, uh, accompanied by the Spirit, of course, it's the Spirit's book, <laughs> uh, and to sustain, help us to sustain that life together. Uh, when, when those books arrived, when his articles arrived here, they arrived also with his other gift, which was the Sunday service for the Methodists. Uh, it's bigger than you think, <laughs> and it has more than one service in it, but he was concerned because <laughs> The Bible belongs to worship, and worship belongs to the Bible. They are inseparable if we're going to worship God. How would you know about God otherwise? You'd have all kinds of experience, but how would you know which ones to take seriously? Uh, how would you know which ones to take more seriously, which ones not to take seriously at all? How would you understand how to live? And that takes the spirit working through the Bible. So Luther, uh, uh, Wesley, turned to a formula. He didn't do it explicitly that I know of, but you can see it otherwise. A formula that Luther had developed. There are three words of God. There's the living word, which is Christ Jesus. 
There's the written word, which is the Holy Scripture, and the 66 books are enough. The other books can help us, some of them can. The apocryphal books like the gospel, uh, the, uh, the epistle of Barnabas. Uh, and then uh, there is the preached word. The preached word is where the living word and the written word come together in our hearts and in our lives. And they come together best when we're together. And the Spirit works with all of us. The Church of the Nazarene, with much the same kind of psychology uh, that the psychology of experience that the uh, Methodists had, understood that when they made their articles of faith. They did not sit down and say, uh, in the words of the old King James, go to now, we shall write us ourselves articles of faith. It was a matter of trying to help others and ourselves to understand what we were experiencing and to understand it in a way that connected us both with the past and uh, we hope with the future and connects us not only together as Nazarenes or bro more broadly as the Wesleyan Holiness Movement or more broadly yet as persons within the broad Methodist tradition, but it helps us to connect with others, Anglicans, Lutherans, Reformed people. We, we, we say many of the same things the rest of them say, the, but they also help, the Articles of Faith help, to state our differences uh, with others clearly and we discover that those differences uh, some of them are very important what we're discovering over time is that our articles of faith did come from a particular time of saying things in particular ways that now uh, we may not need in those particular ways we still may need the doctrine but do we need it in those particular ways uh, or does the old language still speak to us? It's not just because something is old that it needs to be replaced. And it's not just because it's ineffective now that it needs to be replaced. We only replace it when we understand that the Spirit is telling us about the living word and the preaching word is bringing us that living word through the written word in such a way that we are going to have to um, make modifications, not in the, the, big, uh, the big titles on the doctrines themselves, those have never needed to change, but perhaps in some of the language.